Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for Access City Council. I'm your host, City of Las Vegas Communications Director David Riggleman. Coming up on this show, honoring the history in Ward 5 along with their local youth and a new teen center opens at Lorenzi Park. Here to discuss these topics and a whole lot more is the councilman who represents Ward 5. It's Mr. Cedric Creer. Welcome back. How are you? Hello, Mr. Riggleman. How you doing? <laughs> well, it's good to good. see you again. It, I always say it's just hard to believe that it's been six weeks. I know. And here we are back Flies. again. There's so many things going between now and then. Oh, you know. we've got a very, very full show. We do. You so know, we better I, get right to it. It's it crazy. <laughs> Days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, months turn into years, and here we are in the middle of 2023. So already. true. Wow. So true. It's the old saying, uh, the days are long, but the years are short. Yes. You know, and it's, it yes. seems to be the case uh, as I get older, for sure. Councilman, you know Ward 5 very well. You, you're born and raised there, and now yeah. you represent it on the city council. For those of you out there not exactly sure where Ward 5 is, well, there it is on the map. Basically includes our downtown, but it really extends all the way out to the northwest, too. It follows uh, US 95 basically around the curve there. And if you live in that area or work in that area, then, of course, you live in the city limits of the city of Las Vegas, and you're represented on the city council by Cedric Creer. And, wow, Councilman, you posted this on Facebook. Special time for you. You said this. Grateful to have served the residents of Ward 5 for five amazing wow. years. This has gone by fast. It's been an amazing honor to work alongside such a dedicated team. And I look forward to continuing to make a positive impact in our community. Thank you to everyone who supported me along wow, the way. Wow, there you are. Wow. I, I tell you, uh, first, <laughs> let me just thank the residents of Ward 5 for continuing to support me and the work that we're doing. Hard to believe April 18, 2018, Hard I, to I was sworn in. and. Uh, here we are. You know, I always say, though, that we're moving at government lightning speed in Ward 5. Uh, <laughs> we have right. so many things going on. We just have a lot happening, a lot of moving parts, and it's great. And it's, it really is an honor to be leading the charge to revitalize our entire community. So thank you, everybody, uh, who continues to support me and continues to support this, the team in Ward 5 in the city of Las Vegas. Yeah, well, one of the things you've done since uh, you've been in office over these past five years, you've tried to bring a lot of innovation to the ward, yes. and uh, you have certainly done that. Now, case in point, who would imagine growing vegetables in the heart of the city, yeah. but he managed to accomplish this. You posted this on Facebook. You said, fresh, locally grown produce has never been more accessible. The community-based, historic Westside urban farm is now open, providing a variety of delicious and nutritious options, from lettuce and leafy greens, to herbs, vining berries, vegetables, and more. Come check it out and support sustainable agriculture in our community. Now, this, to me, is cutting-edge stuff. It is. It's, it's really futuristic of where we, as a society, are, are heading. Um, you know, people have been growing their own leafy greens for years, but we're just sort of playing catch-up. And this is a city-sponsored uh, event. I have to thank MGM Resorts for their generous donation to the Mayor's Fund for Las Vegas Life in order to make this happen. You know, we're growing our leafy greens in those two containers there. We're going to give them back out to the community. And we also have an agreement with MGM Resorts to uh, sell what we are growing in these containers to their restaurants down on the Strip to make it help to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. And look, this is just phase one. One, phase two, co-op grocery facility, which is there. Phase three, and uh, potentially a four or five story hydroponic growth facility with some housing attached wow. to it as well. Again, All at James Gate Park. That, that's amazing. Uh, hydroponic, uh, you can see the, the, the plants, instead of being out on the ground, mm -hmm. like we traditionally think they're, they're, the they're, they're, they're stacked up. Yeah. yeah. And they have grow lights in there, mm -hmm. and the whole nine yards all done indoors. They do. The technology is amazing. And then also, these, this is keep in mind, this is a gateway also for uh, our residents to go into the field of agriculture, which right, is a right, huge field. Right. You know, ag is big. It's great. Uh, we want to get our, our residents ready, trained, prepared to go into this huge environment, not only just in Southern Nevada, but throughout the world. There's a big ag environment. So very Council, excited. If people are interested in maybe partaking, should they contact your office? Sure. Yeah, always yeah. contact yeah. our office, 702-229-5443. Um, and then you can go on our website, too, yeah. LasVegasNevada.gov, backslash Word 5, and there's some more information that yeah. talks about that. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Um, <laughs> we're growing it's vegetables. Cool. It really in, is. In Who would have thunk it? Exactly. Right it's in the historic good stuff. website, too. Good stuff. <laughs> well, this is also really great. You posted this on Facebook. You said, honoring our city's rich history today by inducting John Mall's Roadkill Grill, John Mall's Meats, into the Las Vegas Historic Property Register. These iconic buildings have been a part of our community for decades, and we're excited to celebrate their legacy. By preserving our past, we're ensuring that future generations can cherish and enjoy these historic landmarks. Good stuff, Councilman. Yeah, you know, just so happy for for, for Chuck and Nita who who run 
Roadkill Grill. Uh, look, it's so popular. You've seen it on the um, uh, you know TV shows around the yeah, country. Food Network, uh, food yeah, right, Network yeah. and, and Guy Fiore. Yeah, Man, yeah. The popularity of this facility yeah. uh, has grown exponentially. Uh, thank you to Bob Stodall and the Historic Preservation uh, Committee, uh, Dr. Seabrand from the city of Las Vegas for the work that they did to put it in to make this true historic facility a official historic facility. Look, we've always thought it was historic. Uh, and when they moved out there in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> that's right. right. Uh, I was a kid going out that way. I, I was not a hunter, but I know people that went out there and then they would, you know, get all the, 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 the great barbecue and the burnt ends and the, and the, the, the pig and just great stuff. The barbecue Great there eating. is really good. The yeah, BQ yeah, is it, on yeah. point. Yeah, yes. Right. And John and the gang, <laughs> they, they make up some good barbecue. They that do. That is definitely, definitely the case. And I did sample that day, by the way. You have to. It's, it's obligatory mm -hmm. because you just you don't want to miss out. So <laughs> we're good. congratulations. And uh, we'll uh, obviously make that an historic landmark now moving forward. It already has been, but now it's official. Yeah, officially it is. Exactly. And then uh, this is also really great, Councilman. You talk about great community partnerships. We're all excited about the Knights right now, holding yeah. our breath uh, for them. But you posted this on Facebook. You said, I want to give a big shout out to the Vegas Golden Knights. The ribbon cutting for the new ball hockey rink at Lorenzi Park was such an exciting event, and it wouldn't have been possible without their generosity and dedication to the community. Thank you for making a difference and for being such an amazing partner in our efforts to empower and inspire young people. We truly appreciate everything you do. And this is cool. The Knights put this in and you know, this they looks did. like a lot of fun too. You don't need ice to necessarily play hockey. <laughs> a couple things. One, Kerry Bubolts, the president who uh, on the ribbon cutting there, uh, Derek England, who was also there, uh, but thank them very much and the Vegas Golden Knights Foundation. Thank you. I, I, I tell you, the Golden Knights continue to do it right. Uh, every year since they've been here, they continue to outdo themselves in being a community partner, uh, not only just in Ward 5, but throughout the entire Southern Nevada region. We thank them. Who, once again, who would have ever thought that we would have a ball hockey rink at Lorenzi? Right. I was a kid. I used to walk to Lorenzi, um, and whether you went fishing and played baseball there, I grew up playing tennis. We would play tennis there. Yeah. And never in a million years would I thought that we would have, one, hockey in Las Vegas, and two, we would have this ball <laughs> hockey rink there, and the kids love it. We're going to be a lot more programming going on there. If you're interested, contact my office because we're we're really going to try to push this and turn it into something great. Well, hey, Councilman, you're you're spot on. I, I can recall I've been here a lot of years, not as long as you, but I've been here a long time. And the concept of major league sports, yeah. <laughs> uh, especially hockey, coming oh, it'll never yeah, happen. Right. It'll, we'll never make it. And now look where we are. So I, I tell you. Um, I, I am blown away mm. and to see the success that the Knights have had uh, getting to the Stanley Cup finals in the very first year yeah. uh, making the Stanley Cup uh, subsequent Run this years, time, yeah. subsequent yeah. now they're in the Stanley Cup with the Edmonton Oilers go Knights go uh, <laughs> I, 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 who would have thought that I would be on a Thursday night if I wasn't at the game actually saying oh the hockey game's on <laughs> I, I gotta get home to watch the hockey we game. all do now I've right, never right, made right. that statement before in my entire life <laughs> until the Golden Knights came aboard and I and I and I, and I am getting home to go watch the Golden Knights play and, and we, I love it we all are and uh, <laughs> and again thank you so much to the Knights for providing that ball hockey court that that's a great facility so it's right there in the heart of Ward 5 not too bad and then councilman I love this too uh, you posted this on Facebook you said uh, thank you Tech Impact for allowing me to be the keynote speaker for your annual luncheon and councilman people this is the other thing uh, people never have imagined that all of a sudden Las Vegas, Nevada is becoming a tech center yes. of all places. Yeah, without a doubt. Look, we are turning into a smart city, as they call it. Uh, tech Impact is located right in the historic west side, at the West Side School. Right. And they are training our youth in the fields of technology, mm -hmm. uh, getting them prepared to go into these entry-level jobs that are high-paying jobs that provide great benefits for right. uh, themselves and their family. I'm a big believer. You've heard me say it before. You give a person a good job, you change their life, you change their family's life, and ultimately, you change the community's lives. So Tech Impact has been doing the work mm -hmm. and we thank them for that. Yeah, and it's just part of this whole movement that we've seen. All these tech companies yeah. are locating most in the downtown and a yeah. lot of them in Ward yeah, 5. Yeah, the downtown yeah. area. Like we, mm -hmm. we've, I think the city's done a really good job yeah. uh, promoting the fact that we have an innovation center downtown. Two and of them. We have no, two no, of them no. now. Uh, the one is in Ward 5 at the old library. Right. Uh, we have to give a special shout out to Michael Sherwood, who's our CIO, uh, in his vast network of resources from uh, around the country. 
as well as some around the world, have allowed companies to come in, co-office and incubate right here in That's downtown right. Las Vegas. And it only brings more. Right, our medical That's, district is going to do the same thing. Exactly, exactly right, as the seen. medical school is here, you'll we'll, you'll start seeing all types of ancillary medical fields that are coming here, cutting edge research and technology coming here, which is only going to benefit our community. Yeah. And groups like Tech Impact, they're going to help prepare the next generation yep. to be ready for those jobs as they as they come into no the doubt community. About it. So it's 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 a great effort all the way around. And again. Uh, when I first moved to town, uh, us being a tech center, yeah. all that Silicon Valley, that's someplace else. It's not here. But, yep. Um, look, and we're look diversifying ourselves from just being right. the hospitality and gaming industry. Right. Even I worked in the industry for 10 years and I have a lot of respect for the industry. Uh, you know, we, we do need to expand and we do need to bridge outside of just being known for hospitality and gaming, and we're doing just that. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly, Councilman. And uh, you also posted this on Facebook. It was great. It said it was an incredible day with the Bishop Gorman High School yeah. Black Student Union students during Career Civic Engagement Day filled with meaningful activities and learning opportunities. You do a lot of this, Councilman. Bring a lot of yeah. students through. Yeah. Our, student, our Civic Engagement Days have grown so much. We started out with just me contacting a couple of friends of mine saying, hey, we're going to do this thing called Civic Engagement Day. Can you come down and send maybe your couple of your kids or so, yeah. uh, because I believe we've kind of lost our way in civic engagement. Kids don't know a lot about government, and we need to inform them and see it firsthand. I have to thank all of the team from the city of Las Vegas. Uh, we saw our communications some, team right there. Yeah, who some were, familiar faces. Yeah, because, Nancy Byrne. because the kids come down, and they spend time with me every day, and they go to different departments, and they learn about government. Uh, they also go to our uh, homeless courtyard resources yeah. center, and they, and they tour that and see what we're doing to help combat uh, homelessness in our community uh, and so it's a full day and it was great to see that the kids and this is I think the third year for the Bishop Gorman students to come down mm -hmm. uh, and anytime they come back the first year they might have come because I kept saying hey come on down come on down the second year they go can we come back yeah that's and nice. the third year they go hey can we come back <laughs> and, and so that's I think a great testament to the team who puts on an amazing day for them so thank you to the team Thank you to all of the kids that experiences uh, Civic yeah. Engagement Day. And you, uh, you're a Gorman grad, but you do this, you provide this opportunity we do. for students all, we do. all across we the We do it with yeah. the Girl Scouts, so we do it with Boy Scouts, <laughs> we do it with other schools, we do it with CORE. We just, you know, if there's a group of kids that are interested in uh, civic engagement and local government, then we do our best to provide them an avenue to learn more. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot uh, different to see how things work yeah. in person versus it is. just reading about it in a book. It or, is, and, or, and plus you learn more that there's more to uh, local government mm -hmm. than just you come down to pay your water bill or, right, or you right. pay your sewage bill or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it, it is a very holistic uh, team of people yep. that help make this city run from communications, operation, maintenance, parks and recreation, neighborhood services, uh, all of our council persons, the mayor's office, all play a key yep. role into ensuring that our cities run properly. It, it's true, and the local government really touches virtually every aspect of your life. You're yep. driving on the road, you're going to a park, you're even, you know, uh, flushing the toilet. Yes, uh, no we're involved somehow. We're involved. So, I call exactly. it. Grand Central Station is our is <laughs> exactly. our office and city government. Exactly. And then Councilman, I, I love this. She took the time, and not only for the young people, but for those uh, a little uh, a little beyond uh, th them in age. Uh, you celebrated uh, Ms. Helen Tolan's 97th birthday back on May 3rd. Yes. So tell Mother us about Tolan. Her. Yeah, so Mother, Mother Tolan, Tolan is celebrated her 90 celebrated her 97th birthday. Um, she has been a staple in our community, a uh, former school teacher, administrator. Mm -hmm. There's a school named after her now, uh, which is wonderful. She actually is my neighbor. She lives <laughs> on a corner from me uh, in her home, has a huge displays of multiple African art out front, and yeah. she brings it in. She's just a wonderful person. Uh, you talk about a person who has just a pure heart and a pure soul. Uh, she has been put on this earth to serve, yeah. and she's done just that. And so we love to recognize her <laughs> any way we can. And uh, her birthday was great. People came out. We had a great luncheon for her over at the Art Center. Yep. And uh, thank you to Ms. Marsha, who runs the West Las Vegas Art Center and team that came out and put this yeah. together. Yeah, and happy birthday. Uh, happy Ms. birthday. Tolan. Yeah, that's awesome. 
And then, uh, Councilman, uh, you know what? We want to make sure that opportunities uh, are, are maybe not in a traditional way, but they're out there for mm -hmm. everyone. And, and I love this, too. You took part in a new mobile library. It was unveiled out at the Boulevard Mall. That's not exactly in Ward 5, but it's going to be cruising all around the valley. Yeah. And uh, this is pretty cool. It looks like you got the governor and everybody else there. It is great. Look, uh, Kelvin Watson, who's executive director for the Clark County Las Vegas Library District, uh, Peter Guzman uh, in the Latin Chamber of Commerce helped sponsor this and get this at the Boulevard Mall. Uh, governor Lombardo yeah. uh, actually came out and did a ribbon cutting with us and, 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 and recommitted himself to talk about education yep. in, in Nevada. Uh, look, libraries, I have said, are the core of many yeah. communities um, is more than just books. There's maker mark spaces so there. There's computer systems that are there. Um, there's robotics training that's mm -hmm. there. There's community space that exactly. you can rent out that are there. And so this is mobile library is located in a very, you know, it, when, I, when I grew up, the, uh, the Boulevard was the only mall yeah. in Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah. It was our mall. No matter where you live, you went to the Boulevard. And so people can go in there. They can take the library card, scan it in, check out a book, return it right there there yeah and it's just really boots on the ground when it comes to getting books in people's hands and I think that's just gonna be the beginning yeah. I think we're gonna see a lot we're gonna more have of these, more of them throughout yeah, the community. popping up all around we yeah. are we are uh, and and they wouldn't uh, happen if it wasn't for private partnerships like with the Latin Chamber um, with the uh, library foundation as mm -hmm. well in the Clark County Las Vegas uh, library district itself so thank you to everybody who played a huge yeah role so in be this. on the lookout for those be uh, on the lookout yeah pretty cool I'm I not know. gonna tip my hat but be on the lookout <laughs> We were talking about tech earlier, Councilman, and this is really cool too. I know this is something you have really been uh, been been working for. You said this on Facebook. You said four years in the making. So excited to finally have the ribbon cutting of the Ernest and Betty Becker Family Technology and Recreation Park. We also unveiled the design studio named after my old friend Barry Newby Becker yeah. Jr. Thank you to the Becker family for all you have done to build our Las Vegas community. And a special thank you to a former Bolden Area Command captain, now Assistant Sheriff Yaz Yatomi and Liberty Baptist Church Pastor Matt Tice for helping to create a vision for this very needed community resource. This is a game changer. It really is. You talk about public-private partnerships. This is the epitome. This is the first time that we have created a technological and recreational park because tech is so important in terms of communicating with our youth. Yeah. It's just that simple. Whether you, you like it or not, this is where they get their information. Uh, we're training these kids once again to go into these entry-level jobs uh, for the STEM fields. We're also training our active adults in the community uh, we partnered with Liberty Baptist Church, Pastor Tice, and Bolden Area Command, and to address an issue in that community, which is in Ward 5 around Lake Mead and Jones area of being a hot zone. Uh, we've had a lot of petty crimes, a lot of break-ins, a lot of broken windows, the graffiti, which is an indication that a lot of kids don't have a lot to do in that right. community. So we looked around and we decided that we needed to create an avenue for kids to have a release and to go be engaged in something outside of sitting at home or getting in trouble. This has done just that. Uh, if you go there at about 2 o'clock, 2.15, it's flooded with kids. Look, and we just did the ribbon cutting a couple weeks ago. <laughs> exactly. The kids show up. They're on the basketball court. They're on the playground, which is all tech related. They're mm -hmm. inside of the building taking classes, Pretty learning. Cool. Uh, it, it, it really is cool. And uh, the Becker family, if you don't know, they're an iconic family that really have been in the uh, development field for decades. Right. Uh, Ernest and Betty Becker, the matriarch and patriarch of the family, um, built all of those homes over there. And it's an older community. They, their company at the time was called Charleston Heights. Yeah, Charleston Heights. And, and they called it Charleston Heights, and they called it Charleston Heights uh, Park. They donated the park to the community. Well, we wanted to find a way to honor them, and that was the way they do it. And their family is growing. It's a big family, and they have been so receptive, so warm, and they want to do so many different things in the community. So thank you to the Becker family for being so responsive and so receptive to us honoring your family but also for your commitment to uh, continuing to help us promote and do all types of activities right at that center exactly. to change lives. Tell everyone where it's located, Councilman. It is located on uh, Lake Mead and Jones, right across from Brindley Middle School. Uh, it's a park that's there. We call it a pocket park. And if you go right in there, <laughs> you'll see it in this brand new park. And this older <laughs> community is there. And it's, it, it, 
it really, really, it's that, really it's, is. That's cold. really I'm cool. I'd like again. to go hang out there. Yeah, I, I tell you, I went. We <laughs> took somebody for a tour the other day, and we were, you know, sit down. You know, it, it's got it's got you know doing iPods. We've got DJ training. We've got uh, 3D printing there. Another th uh, 3D printers. We're we're having Madden tournaments. We're doing. That's um, awesome. It, it, it really is an amazing facility. So. Thank you to our, to our Parks and Rec team, Steve Ford and team, um, Maggie, Sandy, and others who helped put this together. Yeah. It was a heavy lift, but uh, man and boys really, it was, yes. it was great. So yes, yes, congratulations, yes. congratulations. Councilman, uh, you're always out with the in the community hearing from uh, the constituents. Uh, you you took a congressman along with you here recently. You never go wrong hanging out with a congressman. You and uh, Stephen <laughs> Horsford had a meeting with the constituents over at the Doolittle Active Adult Center here recently. We did, and uh, thank you, Congressman Horsford, for for helping us put this together. Uh, we had a packed house at the Active Adult Center. A uh, little Q and A with the congressman and myself. Um, that, as many of you know, he's a chairman now of the Congressional Black Caucus. Uh, we, on um, behalf of Ward 5, we uh, got him a framed picture of the first Congress of black senators and black congresspersons yeah. from the 41st and 42nd Congress as a, as a congratulation for him to ascending to the high, high rank of chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus. You know, Congressman is from Las Vegas, yeah. right from the community. Uh, so it's great to see his ascension and to see all the great work that he's doing in our community. So we wanted to just have a Q&A, and it was packed. Yeah, you always you hear, you hear you hear a lot when you do those Pat, things. I let's tell you, I don't know if they came out to see me or they came out to see the congressman. <laughs> well, probably both. I'm going to say 50-50. Let's, 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 let's say both, <laughs> exactly. And then, Councilman, this is really great. This is such a nice addition to Ward 5 and to the whole community. We had our Arts Festival uh, yeah. took place uh, the weekend of um, on May 6th out at Symphony, Symphony Park. Park. Yep. And this has turned into a really, really nice event. It is. It's our second annual arts and cultural festival at uh, Symphony Park. You know, as we started bringing more apartments in with Park Haven, with Oric, uh, Southern Land is building more behind next to them. Uh, Red Ridge is going to build a huge development right behind there. And if you look at downtown, uh, we have Symphony Park. We've got that grassy area, which the Smith Center owns and operates. Yeah. We need to start creating activities and doing things to bring that downtown core together. Right, right. Second annual, this one was great. First annual was just kicking off. This one was better. Third yeah. annual will be even get better. better. Exactly. It'll get bigger and better. And so the beautiful community came out. Beautiful day. weather. Yep. Uh, thank you to uh, Broadway in the Hood. They yeah. saw the kids who provided performances for them. All the vendors that came yeah. out yeah. Uh, were, were fantastic. Um, shout out to Steph from 94.1 radio station. <laughs> we who saw was her here there. Yeah, dancing yeah, with yeah, us. Yeah, hey, yeah. Steph. <laughs> and, and it was just a great, great, great day. Uh, thank you once again to our Parks and Rec team, Maggie Plaster, Steve Ford, and team for, you know, one, working to put this together, uh, working to continue on the growth of it, and I'm just really excited. I really can't wait till next year. Yeah, it, it really, it was uh, all kinds of art. It was visual yeah. art, performing art, musical art. Yeah. Uh, we had food vendors there. Yeah, food. Uh, it was It was just yeah, great. Stuff. Uh, you know, pets came out, and uh, we just, you know, it was just... It's a great Las Vegas day <laughs> in a beautiful in setting five. <laughs> in Ward 5. Thank you to Myron Martin and the Smith Center also for working with us and yeah. putting this together because it only enhances what we're doing in downtown Las yep. Vegas yep. and especially here in Symphony Park. Love it. Love it. And Councilman, I want to remind everybody, Juneteenth is right around the corner and uh, you posted this on Facebook. You said... Uh, you know, we got to show up and show out for this incredible <laughs> Juneteenth event. Admission is free. You can't beat that. But make sure you register online in advance. The address is www.june19lv.com to save your spot. This is going to be fantastic. Yeah. You know, we partnered with uh, Diane Pollitt and Rainbow Genius Foundation a couple years ago uh, on the um, Juneteenth celebration. Right. Um, we've moved it to World Market Center. Thank you to the World yeah. Market Center team for, for allowing us to come in there. It's an amazing venue. We've had great entertainment. We have great vendors that are there. Uh, the food trucks lined up outside, so there's a lot of food. There's lots going on in a very um, air-conditioned climate environment. Nice. We've had challenges it's with some things. It's warm in June. It, yeah, it, here it, in Las yeah, Vegas. Yeah, you think yeah. June is beautiful, but it could be <laughs> yeah. in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, a tad a little, warm. Yeah. A little warm <laughs> than other parts of the country. And so this is climate-controlled. 
AC environment, beautiful entertainment, beautiful people, and it goes to our great cause for celebrating Juneteenth. Yeah. And so we're looking forward to it. And then there's other activities going on oh, with yeah. Juneteenth yeah, yeah. that are taking place. Uh, please go to the website. Please call our office to find out what is going on. Uh, D. Evans and the National Juneteenth Foundation has a lot of activities that are going on. So we're going to be celebrating yeah. a lot. We should mention, too, Councilman, it is a state holiday and a city holiday yes. now. And so City Hall will be closed on Monday, June 19th yes. this year. How so. about that? Yeah, we like that. My goodness, who would have ever thought that uh, we would have a national holiday? I, I, I literally remember standing in my office, seeing the president sign the sign it in the law mm -hmm. that Bill, huh? this is going to be a national holiday. Um, and, 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 and kudos to the city of Las Vegas, Jorge Cervantes and team, for turning that into a city holiday here at the city yep. of Las Vegas because, um, you know, it's it's a big deal to our community. It symbolizes so much, and I think it's awesome that we take a day to recognize that significance of uh, this holiday that has played into a role. I wouldn't just look at it as a day off. Let's remember, let's reflect, let's do some research. we find out why it's so important. Here, here. And Councilman, before we run out of time, I want to remind everybody too, great opportunity uh, for young folks here. Uh, you posted this on Facebook. You said, don't miss out on this amazing yeah. opportunity to improve your golf skills and have fun. And we're, and we're really talking about kids here. I, you know, I am so excited about this because we've been trying to get this on for a number of years. COVID pushes back. Yeah. We're yeah. working with UNLV School of Hospitality, which has one of, if not the top golf hospitality programs in the country. Hmm. Uh, where they're, I did not know Yes, that. and they, you know, they, they, they train our kids to go into the field of golf. Uh, the the students that are there are like one two scratch handicap golfers, and really? they teach you about golf in general in the whole field. It is world renowned. If it's not the best, it is the best program in the country. Wow. Uh, we're working with the uh, Southern Nevada Golf Association uh, and the Southern Nevada Junior Golf Association mm -hmm. as well to put this clinic on. The key is to expose our community and to kids that do not have access to to golf an opportunity to come out and learn about basic skills of golf oh. and learn about the sport itself. Uh, many times, you know, you see it is it's viewed as a country club sport. Right, right. Right. If you don't have the money, the money and the resources to do it, you're then not you going to play. It. So yeah. our goal is to introduce our youth to golf, and then we're going to work to try to find ways to continue uh, their matriculation into the field of golf if they so like. Yeah. And so please come out. Uh, if you any questions, 702-229-5443. Uh, contact our office. We would love to have you. And this is something. This is our first annual. I think it's going to grow and it's yeah, going to grow and it's cool. going to grow. It really is. It's cool. a great program. Yeah. How exciting! You're going to yeah. get a lot of kids being really enthused. It is. You know, we do it with Inspiring Children's Foundation in terms of tennis mm -hmm. in our community. Yep. Um, and um, we, obviously, we're doing something now with the Vegas Golden Knights mm -hmm. with with hockey. The golf is another thing it, because you look, usually you're only exposed to to baseball, basketball, and football. Typically, typically, but not anymore. Not anymore. It's a it's a it's a big world out That's there. Right. Exactly. Yep. Very cool. I'm mean, very right. very excited about it. Well, Councilman, we are just about out of time here, and we want to tell everybody, hey, we always want to hear from you. So if there's something you'd like to share with Councilman Career, you can find him on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also contact him by picking up the phone, 702-229-6405, or send him an email. His address is ccreer at lasvegasnevada.gov, and here one of his great staff will get right back to you. So. Great show. Man, Thank a lot you. going on. A lot Whew, going I'm on. Tired. We made it through. <laughs> My goodness, I'm going to take a nap yeah. and get up and start all over again. Exactly. <laughs> we'll have you back in six weeks. Yes. We'll do it again, and we'll have another packed show. So, <laughs> Great job, Councilman. Uh, thank you so much. And everyone out there, please don't miss our next show beginning on May 18th with Ward 6 City Councilwoman Nancy Bruni. You can now catch all of our KCOV shows on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. Also, look for our QR code during the closing credits of this show to sign up for our newsletter. And don't forget, you can watch us live on the internet at kclv.tv. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll see you next time around.